guys and welcome back to another M Creator guide. So today what we're going to be covering is a little bit of GitHub. We'll start with uh, opening up the uh, actual website. So if you want to get to GitHub, you need a GitHub account to actually use it. So go to github.com and then you can basically log in to your account. So once you're logged in, uh, you can go to your uh, account page by clicking on your profile and this will bring you to this page here. So if you want to create a repository, the uh, repositories are basically the things that uh, like projects. Also, there are organizations. Organizations are basically like uh, main categories for those repositories. Uh, I can uh, actually show you an example of uh, repositories that I have. Uh, these are all the different types of repositories that I have, but uh, a lot of these are actually under my profile and not so much the actual organization. If we go to organizations, as you can see, I have quite a bit of organizations here. So if we go under, say, the M Creator examples, uh, you can see that all these repositories are the examples that I have, and you can actually expand that. And those are all the different workspaces that I've created for advanced projects, things like that, tutorials, and I've uploaded it to GitHub. And then I actually have a version I can work with later on. Um, now, our repository is basically just a place where you can put your code, your script, your uh, present your website, stuff like that. It, has a number of different uses. You can actually make a website with GitHub without needing to pay for hosting if you know a little bit of HTML. So there's that as well. Uh, for the M Creator examples, I basically just uh, have the download thing, download link here where you can click on that and it will download and then it has the tutorials and stuff like that. Uh, there is a certain type of formatting behind all this. Uh, this is basically what it looks like when I'm actually coding it. Uh, for the thing, the pound signs here are control the actual uh, font size. So if it's a title, H1, H2, H3, if you're going according to HTML, HTML basically what H means is header. Um, if you want to use a header, then these are basically the thing. This would be header three, and uh, this would be header two with two. Um, two things. So two is actually larger than three. Uh, one is larger than two. And I think you can go up to like four or something like that. Uh, this basically indicates that it's actually a link. So, or pardon me, um, a linked image. So the little exclamation mark before the uh, square brackets and then something inside of it. This, the, the text inside of this is basically just the alt text for the image, which is basically needed for um, Google to actually understand what kind of content the image is. And then you have a number bracket and then a closing number bracket, and then you have the image source. So basically I've just used imager and uploaded an image there and then put the image source into this little box right here for the image. Uh, and that basically generates the um, image at the top here. I'll go into the coding and stuff in a future video as it's actually quite useful to know that kind of stuff. But uh, we're going to actually create a repository or an organization, <laughs> an organization today and um, start with that. And then we can slowly work our way into actually figuring out the settings and how to actually use GitHub as general. Uh, it's really useful for M Creator, uh, obviously, because you can. Um, use the desktop app to upload to your repository and you can have things like my um, automations thing. So if I go back to my organizations, I can do that by clicking on the uh, site here, going to organizations, and then I can go to my actual main one. And then I can go to Northwest Trees uh, gaming or North with trees gaming automations. And then you can see that this is all the M creator files for the workspace. And I've basically have it backed up here. 
Now you also might notice that there's a bunch of different tabs up at the top too. These can mostly be customized to what is shown. Uh, some of them like the issues and uh, I think the actions might not be possible to get rid of but uh, things like wiki and um, discussions and stuff like that are able to be um, hidden from the actual thing. Uh, pull requests, those are basically like um, things that have not been merged with a master. Uh, this is the master thing. I have a few different builds here in the works. I have uh, build uh, 0 0.5 which is what I'm currently working on. Uh, we'll cover that in a future tutorial because that can actually have a whole entire thing on its own. But uh, overall, you can do quite a bit with it. Um, you can add links, text, images, things like that, all your basic stuff. And um, you can also host a website uh, from this if you know a little bit of HTML. So let's create an organization. We'll go to our organizations page again. Uh, again, you just click on your profile icon, go down to organizations, and then you can actually go and click down, um, I believe it's create a new organization, so new organization, it should be right at the top here. And what you want to select is the free one. You don't necessarily need to buy it. And then you just give it a name, so we'll call it uh, tutorial, this is probably already taken. Yeah, it's already taken, so we will call it Tutorial 22. And basically, if it's uh, a taken organization name, then you need to come up with a new name for it. Uh, if it is available, basically organizations go across all of GitHub. So any name that you put in here is, if it comes up already taken, then basically someone else on GitHub already has it. So this is going to be your unique URL for your uh, repositories and stuff like that. Um, you want to set your contact email, so I'm going to go North West Trees uh, Gaming at gmail.com and that should be good. And then you want to select uh, what it's for. Um, most people won't need it for business. You can select for personal account and then all you need to do is verify the thing and then you can basically move on to the next thing. All right, so uh, for the address, uh, this is for organization members. If you're the only wor person working on it, you don't need to uh, do this step. You can just uh, click skip this step and then you can basically move on to what you're gonna be using it for. Uh, honestly, though, uh, you probably just need to select um, planning projects and then you're probably much good. You might want to set how many people are working on it. If it's just you, then just set uh, set zero and then that will be fine. Um, you don't need to fill out the other. For the uh, open source projects, uh, educational, stuff like that, because it's a tutorial, it's going to be educational. Uh, most Commonly, you'll probably use uh, either personal projects or you'll probably be using an open source project depending on what you're going to be open, if you're going to make it public or not. If it's going to be public, then you want open source. If you're doing a personal project, then that's basically private, then you might want to do something like that. Uh, we'll be mostly focusing on uh, open source um, kind of projects though in this particular tutorial so I'll select both of these and then what do you expect to do in the next seven days well um, probably mostly planning and tasking work and then the rest is pretty much the general thing that we'll be able to do so planning and keep and tracking work uh, do you have existing repository say no uh, because you're not really there yet and we can hit the submit button and then we can move on to actually creating a repository. So repositories again are like the um, sub part of your organization. Your organization is the main URL. As you can see up here, it says github slash uh, tutorial dash 22. This is going to be our main URL for our repositories. So if we create a new repository, and then you can basically give it a repository name. We'll call it tutorial. 
you can actually notice that tutorial is available now because it's actually under the um, tutorial 22 um, basically URL section. So we have not used this before, unlike having it synced all the way to GitHub. Basically, this repository name is only going to basically cancel out, say it's already taken, if it's already within the repository 22 category. So uh, we can give it a description. You don't necessarily have to, it's optional. And then you can select either if it's private or public. Um, if you want it to be basically open source, then you want to select public. If you want it to be uh, private, then you can select private. Depending on how you want to configure your actual project, you might want to have one private, one public, so you can actually have a place for people to download older versions of your mod, and then you might want uh, a private one for the actual source code and stuff, so you can actually have a backup and a system where you can actually have older workspaces of your M Creator uh, project itself. Uh, you might also want to generate a readme file. It's not necessarily needed. Actually, if you're working with a repository, like a, bringing into the, um, bringing your M Creator workspace is probably not required. Should You probably should not actually add the readme file or any of these other things until you actually import it. Uh, especially if you're using remote, um, like the uh, remote repositories and stuff like that, because it can actually do have some issues if you already have an existing repository. But I'll show you how to use the GitHub desktop app, and then you can basically merge automatically. It's actually more stable to do it that way that I've found. So we'll be using that method. So in our case, we can actually select a readme file and we'll be using it as a private workspace. So after we've created it, it will give us this basic uh, repository setup. Uh, there was a few things on the side here. Um, I don't know what packages are. I haven't actually looked into that yet. Releases are a really easy thing to actually use and are really handy for making versions and stuff like that. Uh, description uh, this basically if you want to customize the about me and stuff like that you can select this and then you can kind of customize the bar on this side uh, if we want releases packages environments stuff like that then we can disable those two if we want to keep releases um, basically topics are keywords for your repository uh, what we would put this under this one is maybe M creator and then you can kind of come up with other things. So we can call this one um, project workspace. Uh, sometimes that happens uh, when you hit enter. I'm not sure why it does that. Uh, workspace. And um, yeah, so that should be the tags that we use for our thing. You can name them whatever you want. Uh, this is if you have a website uh, URL for your actual repository or like your organization. Now, if you have an uh, organization URL, then you can actually work on this, but uh, that requires HTML knowledge. So most likely you will need to leave this blank. Uh, your description, just kind of name whatever you want. Um, it helps show in your organization what it's for. So in our case, we'll just call it um, the source code re repository. So we'll just call it like that. And then we will save. And then you can see that it basically, the description comes up here as well as our tags. And we no longer have the other things that we need. Now, if you want to customize the readme file, again, we'll go into in depth on the formatting and stuff like that. but. Uh, basically, just some tips for now is you can actually use titles like headers for up to four of these. So I'll just quickly print out these for example. So uh, header two, this is header one, and then you have header three, and then you have uh, header four. 
and then you have regular text so if you just type something like this this is regular text and uh, another thing that you can do is you can either do uh, the uh, first character of the either an asterisk like this or you can have a uh, subtraction sign and then you can put text here and this is a basically indent or pardon me bullet either one will work and there's also a few other things that you can do for example um, you could do numbers like this and this will basically do number bullets and so on so we'll just preview this this things and you can see that it basically has a number bullet a regular bullet and a regular bullet these are both um, ones that actually work and then you have your regular text your header 4 header 3 header 2 and header 1 so those are your basic formatting codes we'll go in more in depth into links and images and stuff in a future video but that should get you started with the actual thing. There's also tables and stuff, but again, that can be saved for another tutorial. Uh, we're already getting a little bit long on our time itself. So uh, if you wanna make sure to save this, now that was just the preview on this side. This is the actual file that we're editing. Um, generally, you want to basically give a um, note of what has been changed. So, um, you don't necessarily have to, but it will automatically fill that if you don't, but um, it's good to keep track. So uh, for things like this, for the readme file, we probably don't need to do it, but if it's something like a change in your mod or something like that, it's probably best to try to keep some notes or at least a date of when you changed it and then have something on record of what you changed. But in our case, we just want to commit directly to the main branch. And then what we're going to do is click commit. Now, if you want to create a new branch, which is very similar to what I had um, under a different thing, it'll create like a pull request, or I think it's like a pull request, or it could be an entirely new branch, which you can then which you can then eventually merge into your main workspace. But because it's just a readme file, we can just update this and create it. So that's basically the tutorial for today. If you're new to my channel, uh, consider rating the video by clicking the thumbs up or thumbs down um, button. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.